We are live here on Politics Nation. The morning after the horror in Charlottesville a year ago, I watched as the depth of the tragedy became clearer. Three dead, dozens injured, a city traumatized, a nation in shock. What Charlottesville illustrated to me was the American experience in its full ugliness and in its full beauty. Because across from all that hate, we saw heroes like Heather Heyer, the 32-year-old anti-racism protester who lost her life when a white nationalist struck her and others with a car. Her sacrifice encapsulated what truly makes America great, ordinary people willing to face down social evil, even if it doesn't directly affect them. Earlier, I spoke to Haya's mother, Susan Bro, on what her daughter would want this country to hear one year after the arrest, unrest that silenced her voice, but not her example. I know this is a very solemn weekend for you, uh, and I'll be there preaching at Mount Zion at 11, but the whole world remembers your daughter. How do you want a year later for your daughter to be remembered by the world? Well, I, I'm actually a little uh, reluctant to have a lot of focus on her. I know that that's sort of a touch point for a lot of people because she's the face that they remember, but Heather would want the focus to be on the issues, not on her. And the issues that Heather gave her life for in terms of social justice, you said that you now have continued that fight and you've learned a lot of things in the last year. Well, uh, I was reading your yes, sir. very, very intriguing uh, remarks in, in Cosmopolitan. Tell us what you learned and what Heather would want you to continue to do. Well, sadly, the truth of American history is that black lives have very rarely mattered. Um, and certainly, um, you could almost argue the point that they've never mattered. Uh, I know we've made a few strides over the centuries. Uh, obviously, we just still don't have slavery, but we have things very akin to it. We went from slavery to Jim Crow, went from Jim Crow to basic economic terrorism, and then into the prison pipeline. And um, we're still not treating people equally. That's what Heather would want to focus on. A year later, what do you say to this president uh, who he made a moral equivalence between the people that were standing up against Confederacy, including Heather, and those neo-Nazis that marched in Charlottesville a year ago? Well, I would say the same thing I've always said to him, which is the same thing I taught fourth graders and the same thing I say to myself, and that is, think before you speak always tell the truth and be accountable for your actions. As this nation looks again at Charlottesville and you said it's about the bigger issues and you've given uh, your life and the memory of your daughter's life to this and many of us have been out there a long time trying to deal with this. What, what gives you hope that at the end we can turn this nation around or do you have that hope? I have that dream. I don't know if I, I don't think I'll see it in my lifetime, but I think if we rush to heal too fast, we don't solve the deeper issues. I think we have to solve the deeper issues. And um, I have hope that more people are joining in, more people are aware, um, but it's really up to the individuals in the country whether or not we're gonna make it work. Um, you know, all I can do is, I, I liken what I do as to tossing a pebble into the pond, and so I make a ripple. But if I hand pebbles to other people and I say, join me and let's all toss our pebbles in, then we can get a small wave going. If we get enough waves going, we can get a tsunami, because we need a tsunami change. Wow, I think but tsunamis that... can be destructive, so I'm, I'm hoping we can achieve change without the tsunami, you know? 
I think that's a sermon right there for Sunday morning. I, I thank you for joining <laughs> us, <laughs> and I thank you for your sacrifice, and uh, I will uh, be seeing you in Charlottesville, but this is a weekend that all of us yes, sir. should be pausing.